and just tag them. All right, thank you very much, Jordan, as we are entering high school football like you have never seen or heard it before here on ESPN760.com and partnering up with WPTV News Channel 5 alongside Jason Pugh, Jeremy Marks Peltz, live from Royal Palm Westfield at Royal Palm Beach High School. Uh, here in West Palm Beach, in early start time, Pew, we are expecting a 7.30 kick. They've started things at about 7.15, and Royal Palm, the home team, clad in black and uh, turquoise blue, take over first at their own 35. Uh, and it's a shotgun snap and a handoff up the middle now, trying to bounce it out to the left is Samuel Etienne. He's going to be thrown down at the 36-yard line, maybe a yard with forward progress. Royal Palm Beach taking on Palm Beach Central. The Wildcats 4-7 and seven a year ago, winning uh, District 8-6A despite the sub-500 record. Palm Beach Central 3-7 and seven last year, but expecting much better things in 2010. Palm Beach Central, a much better team going into this 2010 season. JMP, big offensive line, a talented defense led by their front seven. This linebacking group might be one of the best in the area. And a whistle before the snap here on second down and eight. Just getting underway. Palm Beach, uh, Royal Palm going from our left to our right. Torrance Kearney is the starting quarterback. They will rotate Kearney and Ryan McGovern. Kearney last year was the starter behind center, completed 33% of his passes. Four wides in the pattern. And a motion man to the left and a handoff breaking it to the right. Lloyd Howard tried to turn the corner, can't. He's ankle tackled at the 37-yard line at about the line of scrimmage. The stop made by David McCauley, and it'll set up third and long. And David McCauley, he was in on that first stop right up the middle, kind of a handoff to the running back. He led that tackling group. Now you got a third and long passing situation for the Royal Palm Beach Wildcats. Let's see how T.J. Abrams, the quarterback, handles this. T.J. Abrams, the quarterback. Samuel Etienne, Lloyd Howard are the running backs. Tremaine McCullough, their excellent receiver. Third and eight, back to throw Abrams. Lost one down the left sideline and in and out of the hands of Lloyd Howard at about midfield. Coming out of the backfield, couldn't hang on. A three and out on the first possession for the Wildcats. And good defense by Palm Beach Central. That's one of the strengths of this team. So on a punt it away is Kyle Miller. He is a sophomore and he handles both the punting and the kicking duties. Blue tops, blue pants with turquoise piping for the hometown Wildcats. White tops with gray pants and maroon lettering and numbering for Palm Beach Central. Wobbly kick, takes a bounce to the 35. Good Wildcats roll inside the 25 and down at about the 24-yard line along the near sideline. So the Broncos will start things. And Jason Pugh, since we were scrambling to get things going after the excellent pregame show with Jordan Sherwood back in our Atlantic Smart Studios, it is time for the PNC points of the game with my man Jason Pugh. And we will start with Palm Beach Central High School. Like I said, JMP, they are huge up front, especially on that offensive line, averaging about 275 across the board. So they're going to they're gonna need to pound the football with the running game. They're mostly a pro-style offense, two backs in the backfield. Here on this first play, they have one back in the backfield, but they got to get a great push up front with that offensive line. Former Suncoast transfer Ryan McGovern, a toss to the right, and not much doing for Ariel Sinivert. 5'8", 165-pound junior who's also a defensive back. He rumbles around the right side for about three. Now your uh, points of the game for the Wildcats who went three and out in their opening touch. Now we'll get to that in a second with Jason. It is second down at eight. Just over two minutes gone by. Ball on the right hash for Palm Beach Central. They line up and it off to die to the left. Wide receivers left and right. E.J. Sardina to the right. Handoff up the middle in between the wash. Goes Dante Smith for not much. He's taken down at the 25-yard line. And it will be a gain of about one. The stop made by James Prophet. Ryan McGovern is a junior transfer from Suncoast. We expect to see a lot of Torrance Kearney, who started last year at quarterback. Dante Smith and Ray Wilson will rotate getting carries. Angelo Gene Lewis, he has offers from Miami, Florida State, Ohio State, and Wisconsin, among others is their top receiver. He is a slot man to the left, goes 6 feet, 180. 
Shotgun for McGovern. Three wides. Blitz is on. McGovern stands in the pocket with time. He's one down the middle. Caught by Gene Lewis. He's breaking three down the left sideline. 35. He's to the 30. Stiff arms the man of the 20 and shoved out of bounds along the near sideline at the 17-yard line. Got caught at the very end by Daniel Thermidor, but a huge pass play on third down and seven to Gene Lewis, and it goes for 49 yards. And Gene Lewis, just an outstanding player, a deep in route, about 15 yards downfield, and he made an excellent catch, turned on the burners, wasn't able to get away from the free safety, but a nice play call by head coach Rod Harris for Gene Lewis, the wide receiver. So your first look at Angelo John Louis Pew, and as we said, offers from Miami, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Florida State, uh, and this guy's just a junior. Does he have the goods uh, to make it out of the next level? Absolutely. I mean, he has the speed, he has the hands, he has the ability. He's six feet, 183 pounds. You figure he might put on five, ten more pounds of weight between now and his senior season, but he is definitely a playmaker. Well, we've reached the uh, timeout with a water break, so we'll step aside as well. 8.47 to play, opening quarter. Palm Beach Central driving scoreless here on ESPN 760 and ESPN760.com. That's number 11. Yeah, yeah, I know. I messed up that one. That's my hammer rope. Uh, Give him a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm gonna get. Yeah, I'm gonna get all that in. Um, is there? Can you take the echo out of our ear, or do we just I have to turn down the whole time? Don't forget, folks. The concession stand is on the southwest corner of the field. We get hot dogs, hamburgers, candy, chips, and. All right, now did you give up? You just gave a Palm Beach Central point of the game, right? Huh? You just gave a point of the game about Palm Beach Central. Yeah, let's do one more for Royal Palm Beach. That that echo is just killing me. How do I turn my mic up? That's your mic. Yeah. Okay, okay. Your mic's fine. McGovern throws, caught, and... Stop on the play, but there is a flag on the play. All right, it was a 55-yard pass play uh, to Angelo John Louis from Ryan McGovern on third down and eight. And that has Palm Beach Central in the red zone. Scoreless here, 8.40 to play in the opening quarter and a penalty on a rollout pass on first down. Uh, looks like a holding call is going to bring it back to the 24-yard line. Jason, let's finish with our holding PNC points of the game and talk about what the Wildcats need to do. Uh, they need a defensive stand here. Well, on offense, when you have uh, you know that spread option, you need to spread the ball around and make good plays in the passing game and the running game. Palm Beach Central here. McGovern, a fake handoff, gets away from Troubles, going to tuck it under, roll around the left side, and tumbles out of bounds on what looked like a broken play. Dives out at about the 22-yard line. He was pressured by Nicholas White. So there you go, the PNC points of the game from Jason Pugh, and it's brought to you by PNC. Anything more to add? Well, the quarterback spot in the spread option, that's where you have to have success if you're going to run that spread option offense and be successful. Whoever's at quarterback for the Wildcats, whether it's T.J. Abrams or Brock Bukowski, they have to make the right reads in the running game and the passing game to get this offense going. Four wide receivers, double receivers left and right for McGovern, second and 20 from the 27. Fake handoff, McGovern plants to throw, now pulls it back, lost the football and dives on it back at the 35-yard line. He was looking to go up top to Angelo Gene Lewis. That wasn't there, but right in his grill, Tyler Cochlini, one of the defensive linemen, a sophomore. Great job by Cochlini there, getting in the backfield, but he didn't fall for the pump fake. McGovern looked like he was going to throw that ball, but he stayed on his feet. He did not jump, and he took down the quarterback. Great penetration by this defensive line of Wildcats. All right, Jason Pugh, 98th-ranked player in the history of FAU. Uh, what does a team go for here for third and 35? Well, you're probably going to run some kind of screen pass, maybe even a draw just to play it safe, but it looks like the Broncos are going to throw it downfield. Throw. McGovern's going to heave one deep down the field, over the middle to Gene Lewis. He's got it. Touchdown, Palm Beach Central. 
on third down and 35. They convert with a score, a 35-yard touchdown pass to Angelo John Louis from Ryan McGovern, and Palm Beach Central leads 6-0 with 7.20 to go in the opening quarter. And you know what? There's, you just can't stop that. They had two guys on Louis. He just separated, ran a great deep post route, and a beautiful pass by Tyler McGovern, throwing that ball right on the money in the only spot that Louis can catch well, Angelo John Louis had three touchdowns in a game last year. Reels that one in for a 35 yard score. Cameron Golob will handle the extra point duties as they'll run out of the swinging gate formation. And out oh, they're going to uh, direct snap it to John Louis. Two point conversion. He rumbles around right in and trots in for a two point score. They had. John Louis and Golob, the kicker, to the right side of the formation. Everybody else to the left. And normally you see eventually the linemen and the rest of the personnel eventually go to uh, the center of the field to convert the extra point. And that's something that every coach practices with his defense, uh, his special teams unit. This guy, you have the kicker, you have the holder. And the Wildcats, for whatever reason, just unable to contain John louis there. He just made a move on number 12, Daniel Thermidor, and got around to the corner for the score. 8 nothing, Palm Beach Central, 7.20 to play opening quarter. It is the debut installment of Football Night in South Florida, or Game of the Week here on ESPN 760 and ESPN760.com. And beautiful weather, 78 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, and... Uh, We've got some cooling here in our press box. And, of course, that's brought to you by our friends at AB Cooling. To beat the heat, just remember your ABCs of cooling. AB Cooling online at abcooling.com. I think it's safe to say we know what the Broncos' game plan will be. It will be run the ball and throw the ball deep to John Louis. I'm just intrigued by that extra point slash two point conversion. Well, this school hasn't how beaten. you prepare for that? Well, this school has not beaten Royal Palm Beach ever. They've been around for eight years. They've played five times, and they have yet to beat the Wildcats. A lot of former coaches are on the set. Slip kick sails over the head of one of the Royal Palm up men, and it looks like it caromed out of bounds, but did Palm Beach Central recover it first? Still waiting for an indication from the officials. All the players in white and gray are celebrating. Uh, but the officials are still there, are three of them, talking it over right in front of the Royal Palm Bench, Palm Beach Central football. Yeah. So not only do they get an eight-pointer, but now they have the ball deep in Wildcat territory. And that's a tricky spot for one of your upbacks there. You usually want that kid to wave for a fair catch, but he did not. He let the ball bounce in front of him. And the Broncos, again, on fire all over that football. So they set the football up inside the 30 on the left hash at the 27. And Ryan McGovern in the shotgun. John Louis is to the wide of the right side. And the snap slips through the hands of McGovern. He has to dive on it and pounces on it all the way back at the 41-yard line. A loss of 14 on an errant snap from center Jordan Schiller. He's taking over for Shane McDermott, who's now a Miami Hurricane. Well, it looked like a good snap from center. It just looked like McGovern couldn't hold on to the football. Smart move by him, though, not trying to pick up that ball and make a play. Just get on the ground, dive on it, and live to see another down. So a loss of 14 will set up a second down and 24. Ball at the 41-yard line. If you're just joining us, 35-yard touchdown pass. Ryan McGovern, the new quarterback for the Broncos. Up top to Angelo John Louis. And here comes an end around, running right with open room. Ray Wilson gets inside the 35 and is cut down at the 34-yard line. Uh, he was chopped down by J.B. and Green following a pick of seven. Good job of this offensive line getting around and pulling the guards there. Number 79, Brandon De La Cruz coming around and creating some space for Ray Wilson. This offensive line is big, but they're not just straight-ahead block, block, uh, blockers. They've got guards that can get out and pull and create some separation. Still a long way to go. Third and 16. Line to make is the 18-yard line. McGovern with time to throw. Guns went up the right seam, and he overshot his intended receiver. Looking for Dante Smith to scat back out of the backfield. He was the intended target at the five-yard line, and now it'll be a fourth down at the 34 of Royal Palm. Some miscommunication there on the Broncos' offensive part. Number 22, Dante Smith. He was a little bit too close to John Louis there on that pass, but it looked like they ran the same route. You never want to have two receivers in the same spot down the field. So as we await the decision for head coach Rod Harris in his fourth year for Palm Beach Central, 
and we are at a water break. Uh, both teams pretty injury-free here in this opening game. Uh, probably the time of year where you expect teams to be their healthiest, but uh, no bumps or bruises for either the Wildcats or the Broncos. Yeah, and that's a good sign for both teams because you always have, or it seems like you always have maybe one or two players coming out of training camp that may get a little nicked up, may even experience a serious injury, but the good thing about this game, everyone's healthy, everyone's playing, the superstars are playing, no one's banged up, so I'm looking for a great game here at Royal Palm Beach High School. All right, so here we go, and on to punt it away is Andrew Dean. He's stationed inside his own 45-yard line. High snap, grabs it at the helmet, and the left footer gets a wobbly kick, going to try to bounce it inside the 10. It caroms to the 10. It rolls out of bounds along the far sideline inside the 5, or at the 5-yard line is where they'll down it. Terrific. will take over with the first down at the bye. Let's see if this Royal Palm Beach offense can get something going here on their second drive of the game. First down, Wildcats. Can we drop? Seems to be about two on that play. Take a second down for the Wildcat. Second down. some confusion about where the concession stand is, head towards the scoreboard. That's where it is, right down near the scoreboard. Do we doubt the area code?
Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear us? Alright. On the 30 yard line. All right, we apologize for the technical difficulties here at Royal Palm Beach High School, but it has been all Palm Beach Central. No difficulties for them. Up 10 to nothing after a safety, uh, thanks to a fumbled exchange, uh, which led to a Royal Palm player getting tackled in the end zone and a handoff to the up man, taking it off the left side for a couple of yards. Dante Smith down to the 32-yard line. And it looks like Palm Beach Central is just having their way on both offense and defense with the Wildcats. Not good field position for the Wildcats on that last, last offensive drive, but I mean this defense is going to have to step up. Step up. They're down the hole 10 points early here in this fourth, first quarter. Sawyer peed wide to the left inside of him in the slot is John Louis and a receiver to the right. McGovern turns right, floats it right in a bubble screen. Caught by John Louis. Makes a man miss at the 35. Darts past another one to the 40. He's got a first down and more. Bumped out of bounds far sideline. At the 45-yard line, a 13-yard gain, finally knocked out by Daniel Thermidor. And when you watch plays like that of Louis, you see why he is a big-time wide receiver, maybe the best wide receiver in this area. He might be the best coming out next year in his senior year. A simple hitch route there, that's only a one-yard pass, but he turned it into a 13-yard gain by making the corner miss. Well, Coach Harris was very praiseworthy, and everyone uh, close to Palm Beach Central was as well. We'll tell you about what the scouts say uh, about Angelo John Louis uh, coming up as there's a stoppage in play, and it looks like a player was late to come off the field, Daniel Thermidor, as Frank Kumpf wants to substitute him. So Royal Palm down 10 to nothing, and they do bring a substitution in the form of Tremaine McCullough, who's now going to be uh, a strong safety on that far side. All right, so trip receivers to the left, including John Louis, P to the right, first down, End around running right and taken down in the backfield for a loss. Ray Wilson escaped the first tackler, could not escape the second. He was pulled down by Javian Green for a loss back at the 43-yard line. And that's the same end around that Palm Beach Central ran for about a six or seven yard gain. But it looks like the Wildcats have figured it out. We'll see if they go to it again here in the near future. You know, Jason, we were telling you about the injury situation and the, the lack thereof. The injury report brought to you by Cleveland Clinic. If you would like additional information about the sports medicine update you've heard, call 1-800-639-DOCTOR. Visit clevelandclinicflorida.com. Toss play running left. Trying to get outside the numbers is Dante Smith, and he's pushed out of bounds after a two-yard gain at the 25 at the 45-yard line. Check that. Pushed down by the free safety, Cotton Shroud. It's third and eight forthcoming. We just saw over two and a half to play in the opening quarter. And an excellent play by Cotton Shroud there, getting on the outside and not letting that offensive player get around him. You can see the speed of this Wildcat defense. I would be surprised if Palm Beach Central doesn't start attacking this defense in the running game right up the middle. That was Rod Harris's concern, more with the speed of the offense from Royal Palm, but you're right, they've been fast on defense. Another bobbled snap, but a flag at a procedure call is going to negate this play. Thrown by the referee at the 40-yard line. Play doesn't matter due to the penalty, but... And it's a delay of game that is whistled on Palm Beach Central. Probably the first thing that's gone wrong for the Broncos. Yeah, today. that's the second snap, actually, that quarterback Tyler McGovern has mishandled out of the shotgun formation. And there seem to be good snaps by the center, Jordan Schiller. Third and four, two receivers left. And twins to the right. And another... So while we have this time out, I want to tell you about our friends at PNC Bank. And you hear Evan Cohen weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. talk about PNC Bank, and for good reason. They're the bank of choice for Kirk Herb Street, for Evan Cohen, and for John Martin. PNC's wide range of services can make banking easier and more convenient than ever. 100 and 10 PNC locations in South Florida. You got ATMs and Hess gas stations for personal and business that. banking. The virtual wallet system with three accounts and one. All online at PNC.com. 
PNC Bank, truly for the achiever in us all. Palm Beach Central, Rod Harris, excited about this team this year going into the season in this first quarter. You see why. The offense looks good. The defense... Tyler the quarterback position finding different down at nine with just over a minute left in the first quarter two eight and one wide receiver to the Man in motion, E.J. Sardine in the backfield, takes a toss. Now he's going to stop and throw. Unloads down the right side. It's up in the air, and it's intercepted. He was looking for Angelo John Louis, and picking it off, Daniel Thermidor. Finally, the junior gets the best of John Louis. And Thermidor, he was actually beat on that play, but the ball, it was underthrown there by E.J. Sernador. He did not throw that ball very well. That would have been another touchdown for John Louis, but a good job by the defense going up at its highest point and picking that ball off. That's exactly what this Wildcats team needed, down by 10 points. And it looks like, Jason, that Royal Palm has made the adjustment in at least getting two guys to wherever number five is. And I think that's the smart thing to do for the rest of this ball game. Shotgun for T.J. Abrams. Man in motion. Give it up the middle. And, oh, it's a fake handoff. Rolling to the right is Abrams, and he got clotheslined. Trying to turn that corner past the 20 to the 21-yard line. A vicious hit by Nick Dorabilla, co-captain for Palm Beach Central. And Dorabilla came over. Nice hit. Gabby Sanchez-type clothesline right there. <laughs> Excellent play by the defense. And that could be the final play of the first quarter. Let's see if they're able to run one more play off. Second down and four with the ball at the 15-yard line. The deep back is Samuel Etienne. He got three receivers, twins to the left, and a man in motion to the right. Etienne off left guard. Nice crease across the 20 and past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Taken down there. That should be... Uh, first down. It is a first down. It'll be the final play of the first quarter. A first quarter that was dominated by the visitors. Palm Beach Central leading Royal Palm 10 nothing. This is Football Night in South Florida here on ESPN 760 and ESPN760.com. Alright. Well, we keep dropping. There's nothing we can do about that right now. But we're still on TV when we're cutting out, so I can't be talking to you on the phone like every five minutes. I know. I'm, I'm telling Bob. I know. I'm telling Bobby that. Um, I don't know if you heard me. Touchdown, Hurricanes! Wow. Mid and 40 in, Ja'Cory Harris throws a touchdown pass. Is that all? All right, uh, bring us back after this one if you can. First down, Wildcats. Yeah. They yeah. Did. Yeah, this phone line's on the fritz. Like, it keeps cutting out. Okay. 
All right, start of the second quarter. Jeremy Marks Peltz and Jason Pugh. James, the intern with us as well. Bobby Klein, Jordan Sherwood back in our football night in South Florida Atlantic Smart Studios. 10-0 Palm Beach Central. Royal Palm has it going from our right to our left on second down and six. Uh, shotgun snap. Abrams hands off up the middle. Etienne had good room and then paid for it at the very end going in between the hash marks to the 39-yard line. A first down run. Ryan Nam lit him up at the end. And this spread option offense starting to gain some life here in this second quarter. T.J. Abrams, the quarterback, doing an excellent job making his reads on the defensive ends and outside linebackers of Palm Beach Central. He knows when to hand it off to his big fullback. and He knows when to keep it and take it around the corner. All right, so it's a first down and 10 with the ball at the 39 for Royal Palm. One receiver to the left, one to the right. Slot man to the right, motions in the backfield, Lloyd Howard. Uh, Fake handoff to Etienne, keeping it an option off the left side. Now trying to churn for yardage through one defender as the quarterback, T.J. Abrams, eventually is going to be spun backwards. Forward progress should take him to about the 44, a four-yard scramble. Let's just recap the scoring because we apologize for the technical difficulties. But for those that have stuck uh, with us the whole time, you had a touchdown pass early on, 35 yards Ryan McGovern to the outstanding wideout Angelo John Louis. Then a two-point conversion, John Louis on a direct snap ran it right into the end zone. And then a safety uh, off a fumbled Royal Palm snap where they fell on it in the end zone, and thus that was two points. Third down and four from the 45-yard line. Play fake and trying to go left and go in no place is T.J. Abrams. He got slashed down on an ankle tackle by Max Marshall, uh, who has an offer from FIU, 6'3", 265-pound senior. David McClowey also in on that play. Don't leave out the linebacker there. This talented group of linebackers here for the Broncos. They're the ones that are going to have to lead this big defensive line and lead this secondary. The secondary is extremely young for Palm Beach Central. This linebacker is a big, fast, athletic group. All right, so the third and four is the second and four, I beg your pardon. Now it's third down and six from the 44. Abrams lost one over the middle on a slant. It's caught spinning out of a tackle, Lloyd Howard. He's got the first down taking in the Palm Beach Central territory. Finally knocked down at the 45-yard line. They needed six, and they got 11. And it looked like Abrams was not expecting that shotgun snap to come that soon, but he did a great job of handling the ball, and he saw that Lloyd Howard, the running back who was split out at wide receiver, was not covered by a linebacker, quickly got him the football, and an easy first down pick up there for Royal Palm Beach to keep this drive alive. So the Wildcats easily with their best drive put together so far, just under nine minutes to play second quarter, they're down 10 nothing. Wide receivers left and right, two uh, slot backs left and right. And a whistle and a stoppage before the snap. There is a whistle on the play. And T.J. Abrams is motioning that he has some sort of equipment problem. I think it's with a wristband that uh, has the play. So he's got to go out by rule for at least one play. And in comes Brock Burkowski. We were expecting to see two quarterbacks. And number 15, Brock Burkowski, will now take his team out from the shotgun. In the pistol set with the same formation. Howard motions in the backfield. Handoff running off right guard for good yardage is Samuel Etienne. They wanted to establish him early on, and Etienne slices his way for about five yards. Excellent running there by Etienne right up the middle. Not the ideal situation there for Royal Palm Beach, having your backup quarterback Bukowski come into the ball game like that, but a good job of the offensive line getting great push, and now T.J. Abrams is back in the ball game. Yeah, it looked like kind of like Pat White during the season this year. <laughs> Just hand the ball off. All right, so second down and six. Ball at the 41 of the Broncos. Back to throw Abrams. Flush to his right. Chase from the blind side. Flings with it on the right sideline. It's caught and stepping out of bounds. Trying to escape a defender. Uh, Near a first down catch for Lloyd Howard. That was Lloyd Howard on the reception for Ron. And Howard did an excellent job coming back to the quarterback. A lot of times we see wide receivers run down the field or continue to run their route when their quarterback is in trouble, scrambling outside the pocket. But Howard came back to his quarterback, gave him a big target to throw to, an excellent catch, an excellent play. Now you got third and short here. 
Stands almost filled here at Royal Palm High School. Good crowd. Good crowd tonight. Got a lot of crowd right in front of us, and then along the far sideline, a good contingent of Palm Beach Central fans. Third down and one from the 36 of the Broncos. Shotgun snap fielded by Abrams. He's going to run across the grain around the left side, trying to get to the corner and chase out of bounds, but not before he was able to maneuver for a first down. Steps out at the 34-yard line. A long way to go for two yards, but they moved the sticks. Yeah, just a simple play for the offense. Let's get a hat on a hat, and let's have our quarterback just outrun anybody. Their outside linebacker, their safety to the corner, and that's exactly what T.J. Abrams did. He has some quick feet for a quarterback. You know, we haven't talked much about this offensive line, but, boy, do they have a big boy on that right side of the O-line. We'll get to him in a second. Three wide receivers make that four wides, twins left and right. Bubble screen right, and it is at the feet of Tremaine McCullough, who really hasn't had his name called much today. 18 catches and a couple touchdowns last year. That screen pass is incomplete, second and ten. And that would have been a good-looking screen right there to Tremaine McCullough, but Abrams got to get the ball up a little bit higher through that one into the dirt. Never gave his offense and his receiver a chance to make a play. T.J. Abrams, just a sophomore. Brock Bukowski is a junior. A lot of youngsters on this Royal Palm team. Frank Kunt has called them, you know, a rebuilding project, but one with a lot of optimism. Here's Etienne, second down, up the middle, slices through the first tackler, goes into the secondary and knocks a defender with him all the way down to the 25-yard line. Tough running by Samuel Etienne, and it's going to result in a first down. Etienne doing a good job keeping his pad level low, keeping his legs turning and picking up the first down. That's the misconception about the spread option offense. A lot of people think that it's pass oriented because you got four guys usually spl- uh, split out, but that's not the case. The Wildcats, they want to run the ball and run the ball effectively. Twin receivers to the right, one wide out to the left. And one of the linebackers on a blitz came into the neutral zone early, but was he induced? David McCauley definitely stepped in before the snap. And it's going to be offside, so five more yards. Not only has this been a constructive drive here, Jason, for for Royal Palm Beach, but it's been a very lengthy drive. Absolutely. They've had a lot of third downs that they've picked up. On the ground, T.J. Abrams doing a good job of managing this offense and moving him downfield. You have to come away here with something. You can't get a turnover. You can't do anything stupid, a penalty. Come away with either a touchdown or a field goal because this drive has just been too good to come up empty-handed. Double receivers to the left. And now joining them is Jones as a slot man to the left. He motions in the backfield going right. And the handoff, Etienne, running to his right. Picks up about four, diving forward to the 18-yard line. Knocked down by Milton Pizarro, the middle linebacker. An excellent linebacking trio for defensive coordinator John Brady and Palm Beach Central. Second and one after the penalty on first down. Samuel Etienne. He's already a first down, I beg your pardon. He's already a small guy, but he really runs low to the ground and extremely hard. This offensive line starting to punish that front seven. We talked about that being a strength of this Broncos defense. The offensive line of the Wildcats finally starting to, uh, you know, push them off the ball and get some movement. So here come the Wildcats in the red zone at the Palm Beach Central 13. And a timeout called before the play by Palm Beach Central. We'll catch our breath as well. Just approaching the midway point of the second quarter. Royal Palm driving down 10-0 to Palm Beach Central. This is Football Night in South Florida on ESPN 760 and ESPN760.com.
And I think this play is going to come back. I think he might have had an unsportsmanlike conduct after the penalty, uh, but a, a run off the right side, and this is going to be wiped out. And that's unfortunate because that was an excellent play call for Coach Kumpf of the Wildcats. Now they got to bring it back. And now we'll see how this offense responds on third, or excuse me, first, and about a cab ride here. What is this, first and Well, they had third. Three? You saw what happened on third and a cab ride for Palm Beach Central earlier in this game. Oh, yeah, just throw it up deep to John Louis. Jeremy Marks Peltz with Jason Pugh here on ESPN 760 and ESPN760.com. It is football night in South Florida. And after the penalty, the football set at the 34-yard line, and it'll be a first down and first and goal from the 34. Shotgun snap. Abrams turns left, tries to fling it left on a quick screen out of the backfield, and it's wide of Lloyd Howard. Second down and long. And by the way, here on ESPN 760 Football Night in South Florida, brought to you by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, the nation's oldest and largest group of broadcast media schools. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO or log on to GoCSB.com. Get trained, get connected, 1-800-TV-RADIO. And we talked about getting something out of this drive if you're the Wildcats. You couldn't afford a penalty or a turnover, and a penalty is exactly what happens here for Royal Palm Beach. Now they're set back here, second and goal from the 34-yard line. They have to get away from that potent running game that they had on this drive. Lewis and Howard to the left, twin receivers to the right, Etienne in the backfield. Rolling to his right now, tucking it under and running. Sprinting inside the 25, Abrams got horse-collared at the very end as he was yanked to the turf at the 23-yard line, and I would suspect probably 11, 12 more yards tacked on at the end of that option. Yeah, that, that's going to be a penalty. That rule came into play last season for high school football. You were not allowed to horse-collar and take a guy down to the ground. The FHSAA changed that rule in high school football a year ago, and that's going to be a huge penalty on Palm Beach Central. So they marked the football down at the 10-yard line, and now you have a conventional third down and goal. I never understood why it took so long for like all branches of football to make yeah. the horse collar illegal. Well, we got to the point in the NFL where guys were just getting injured and missing weeks and even seasons because of the horse collar tackle. Now they finally moved it to high school. You can still horse collar, you just can't horse collar and take a guy down to the ground at the high school level. Third down and goal from the 10-yard line of the right hash. Twin receivers left, double wide of the short side right. Etienne in the backfield behind T.J. Abrams. Abrams hands to Etienne up the middle, tries to shift right, and then gets blasted backwards at the 6-yard line. Had a hole momentarily, but it closed, and David McCauley takes down the ball carrier. So we're looking at a fourth down and goal from about the 3. I make that a third down and goal at about the three. The scoreboard had third down, but apparently it was second down. Yeah, and T.J. Abrams is going to have another opportunity to try and punch this ball in the end zone. So Abrams gets the play call from Frank Kumpf, from Frank Kumpf and his offensive staff. And here we go on third down and goal from the six. Five minutes even to play, first uh, second quarter. Ten nothing, Royal Palm Beach trailing Palm Beach Central. Shotgun snap, Abrams, end around, going right, Lloyd Howard. It was not fool, He was not fooling anybody. He gets flung down for a loss. David McCulley again, swallowing him up back at the 13-yard line. That's one of the benefits of having an experienced linebacker and a senior like David McCulley. He read that play all the way. It had no chance. You thought that Royal Palm Beach might have been able to get around the corner there, but McCullough, he read his keys, he stayed home, and he made an excellent tackle for a loss in the backfield against the Royal Palm Beach Wildcats. Now they're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. Yeah, and this is no gimme. Kyle Miller comes onto the field with the ball at the 16-yard line, a 33-yard field goal try from the right hash mark angled to the left. Royal Palm trying to get on the scoreboard, down 10 nothing. High snap put down. Miller's right foot kicked towards the uprights and through. Kyle Miller puts the Wildcats on the board. Some scattered applause here at Royal Palm Beach. It's now 10-3 from Palms West Stadium. 3.58 to play in the second quarter. Royal Palm has trimmed the deficit to a touchdown. In favor of Palm Beach Central. Still Palm Beach Central with a 10-3 lead. But Jason, long drive there by Royal Palm. 
have to be disappointed in some ways that they only got three, but still, what did you see that made that drive click? Well, I saw this offense settle down, led by their quarterback, T.J. Abrams. He did an excellent job this spread option offense, reading the defense and taking what the defense gave him. And Samuel Etzanin, how about him? I mean, the fullback doing an excellent job of just punching the ball up the middle, getting five, six, seven yards of carry. I mean, this offensive line has really started to turn the corner here in this second quarter. Let's see if they can keep responding to this tough Palm Beach Central defense who has an excellent front seven, especially at the linebacking group. Football night in South Florida here on ESPN 760 and ESPN760.com. Brought to you by the Kravis Center. Check out Kravis's on Broadway 2010-2011 season featuring Dream Girls, Dizzy's Beauty and the Beast, Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein, West Side Story, and The Color Purple. For information, visit kravis.org or call 561-832-SHOW. Kravis on Broadway or hit shows, hit home. Now, if you're Royal Palm Beach's defense, you're well-rested. Your offense just put together an excellent long drive that consumed a lot of time off the clock. You cannot come back out here on this field and get the ball thrown over your head. Tyler McCovern, he has picked this defense apart. Let's hopefully see if they made the adjustments here in the second quarter. End over end kick grabbed along the near sideline just in front of the goal line by Ray Wilson. He gets to the 20 then gets stacked up and driven to the Royal Palm sideline. Forward progress should take that to about the 22 yard line. Um, I think if you're Palm Beach Central and if you're both teams you know with Angelo John Louis garnering a lot of attention that doesn't mean that they're not going to throw it to him but let me throw out another name. Number 12, E.J. Sardina, who we were told, almost as fast as John Louis, good student in the classroom, and definitely can make some things happen. And Sardina, he had a beautiful catch that kept a drive alive on a third down for Palm Beach Central. He underthrew his teammate, John Louis, on a pass uh, that probably should have been a touchdown, but he is a receiver that can definitely make plays, like you said, J.M.P. Ryan McGovern under center with three first wide down, receivers. On first down, they'll start with the running play. Dante Smith bouncing it right. Breaks a tackle down the sideline. 35-40. Still on the move. And finally stepped out of bounds. Where will they mark him out of bounds? Dante Looks Smith like he reached the... As the officials still spot the football, and they're going to spot it back at the 37 and say the back foot went out of bounds. Still a 15-yard rumble to first down. And that's just an excellent job by the offensive line. Great seal block by number 52, K.C. McDermott. I mean, he's playing that tackle position. He did an excellent job of coming down on the defensive end, opening up that lane for the running back. I mean, he's only a freshman champion, but he is a big, talented offensive lineman. No question about that. And a good pedigree as well. Three receivers, twins left, and John Louis split out to the short side right. And now Dante Smith will join them in the slot. Smith motion man, gets the handoff, coming around the left side. Fumbles the football. It's loose on the ground. There's a scramble for it inside the 35-yard line. A lot of black and turquoise jerseys around that ball. Did they come up with it? No, they did not. How did Palm Beach Central, after all that, look like five against one, somehow retain possession as the football marked back at the 34-yard line? And you know Coach Kampf of Royal Palm Beach has to be upset. Three black jerseys around the football, which was on the ground, but no one able to come up with it. That's unfortunate. The first player tried to scoop and score. You just got to fall on that ball. Second down and 14. Back at the 34-yard line. Handoff running left. And a new running back checking in, Deshaun Blackwood. He advances to about the 40-yard line for a gain of about six. Did you uh, have any opportunities to scoop up uh, footballs? No, I wasn't. Well, I wasn't recovery? fast enough or flexible enough to scoop really, and score. that's shocking. I just I laid on the ball. Thought. I just laid on the ball. So I ask you again, did you have any fumble recovery? Yes, I had a fumble recovery. Youngstown State. Great game. A lot of buzz about that one. Great game for FAU. They're Third still, and six. Still talking about receivers. it. Receivers Back to throw McGovern. Sets in the pocket. Zips it left, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Ray Wilson out of the backfield. An incompletion on third down. And here comes Royal Palm back onto the field. Definitely the Wildcats gaining some momentum with 2.19 to play in the first half. They trail 10-3, to but about to get the ball back before intermission. And although that drive stalled for Palm Beach Central, I think we saw... Uh, what we're going to see the majority of this season with this offense, and that is a good running attack behind a huge offensive line. Andrew Dean, the punter. Jermaine McCullough, the returner. 
Short kick, bounces at the 35. McCullough's not going to have a chance to return it and takes a sideways roll and eventually deadens at the 34-yard line. So 2.08 on the clock, second quarter, 10-3, Palm Beach Central on top of Royal Palm. And again, no balls thrown Angelo John Luis way ever since that interception. Absolutely, and now that the Wildcats are back on offense, JMP, a little over two minutes remaining before halftime. They still have plenty of time to move this ball downfield and possibly pick up a score, whether it be a touchdown or a field goal. T.J. Abrams has not looked good passing the ball, but he has definitely managed this offense on the ground. T.J. Abrams in the pistol set with three receivers on first and ten from the 35. Abrams gives it to Etienne, running to his right, and dives forward, knifing his way to about the 38-yard line. Tough sledding there as Milton Pizarro made the tackle, gain of three. Defensive line starting to key in on Etienne, the big fullback of Royal Palm Beach. They don't want him get off, getting off to a great start here in this second quarter. Samuel Etienne, the senior. Abrams on second down. Fake the inside handoff and gets sacked. Back at the 30-yard line, the blitz was on. And knocking him down for the sack, Matt Garcia, backup defensive lineman, a senior, 6'1", 195 pounds. Now it's third down and 13 with a minute and 33 to go in the first half. Nice job by the defensive line. Getting off their blockers. You know it's a passing situation here for Royal Palm Beach, so work your pass rush moves. Get your hands going, move your feet, and try and get to the quarterback. So often we hear that pass rushing is about effort. A lot of times when you're facing an offense, it's running the ball down your throat. Guys are tired on the defensive line, but a good job there by that defensive lineman. I think that was 91, Tyler Ackerman, on that sack there, getting back to the quarterback and bringing him to the ground. Yeah, Ackerman was in the vicinity. Uh, Garcia was in the vicinity. Uh, You had three guys that were surrounding T.J. Abrams. All right, so a timeout for Coach Kunf there, and now here comes a third down and 13. One wide receiver, or twins to the right, two receivers to the left. Abrams turns right, slings it on a screen, and again, the pass not on target, falling at the feet of the intended receiver. And that'll set up a fourth down as they were trying to get it to Jerry Jones. And another low pass there by Abrams. Quarterback has thrown two balls into the dirt. Both screen passes, and you have to give your receiver a chance to make a play. Palm Beach Central, nothing to lose here as time is winding down here in the second quarter before halftime. Looks like they're going with an all-out punt block. Got a returner back, but guys got their hand on the ground. Look like they're coming after the punter. And, And by the way, Angelo John Louis is back to return. Maybe maybe another reason why they can go with the uh, punt block unit. Kyle Miller will try to arc this one. You've got eight up on the line for Palm Beach Central. And they end up rushing eight. And they nearly got their hand on it. Short sideways kick. And will soar out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That might have been partially blocked by Kyle Miller. As it stands, just a 22-yard effort. And with a minute and 23 to play in the first half, terrific field position for Palm Beach Central. Up 10-3 to and looking for more. And plenty of time to move the ball down the field. I think that punt was partially blocked there by Miller because it was ugly off the leg of the punter. 123 remaining before halftime. If you're the Royal Palm Beach defense, you better put two or three guys on John Louis because you know this Broncos offense is going up top. They need 45 yards to pay there. John Louis is wide to the right, the four receiver set. High snap, McGovern with a tight pocket, steps up, throws the middle, caught inside the 35, and out of the 31 yard line, taken in for a first down by EJ Sardina. Sard- his first catch. Sardina, a nice big target over the middle. Great job of catching the ball with his hands. Now they're going to say it was just shy of the first down. Second and one. McGovern to throw. Flush to his right. Buying time. Still on the run. Slings it right. Caught by Angelo John Louis. That is no question about it. A first down. Spun out of bounds. Uh, inside the 30 
Knocked out at the 26. And this is one of the situations where experience, especially at the quarterback position, comes into play so much. On one team, you got T.J. Abrams, who's a fine quarterback, but just doesn't have the arm as a sophomore. Tyler McGovern, a senior, moving his offense down the field with his arm, making great throws. Can the Broncos take a two-touchdown lead before halftime? 35 seconds and ticking. Back to throw McGovern. Still looking, still looking. Lobs one up in the left flat. It is caught, dropped. Is it an incompletion or a fumble? The officials indicating as if it's a fumble, and it's recovered by Royal Palm. E.J. Sardina had his hands on the ball, had it stripped away, and it was recovered on the bottom of the pile by by Darrell Felder, senior defensive back, and a flag after the fumble. That's exactly what this defense needed, a turnover. and Not a good sign here for Palm Beach Central, their quarterback, Ryan McGovern coming off the field slowly. Looks like he's holding his ribs or his stomach. Oh, wow. May have taken a shot there at the end of that throw. But a huge play for Royal Palm Beach. May not get him back in the game with 20 seconds, seconds, uh, 27 seconds left remaining to halftime, but at least it prevents this Broncos offense from putting up another score. Minor to stay tuned. Jordan Sherwood will be back at halftime. We'll have stats and scores, including... Things going on college football-wise. University of Miami off to a quick start against Florida A&M. FAU opening up its season against the University of Alabama, Birmingham. So a personal foul penalty, by the way, at the end of that catch, or at the end of the fumble. And Abrams on first down, trying a quarterback draw, not going anywhere. He got slung down. Big Tyler number. Ackham uh, and Max Marshall. Yeah, Max Marshall, number 88, the nose tackle, the defensive tackle, excuse me, having an excellent game. For Palm Beach Central, that's the second or third play he's been in on behind the backfield. It stops the clock with 18.6 seconds left, and Palm Beach Central is going to use its final time out here. So an interesting first half, 10-3 is your score. Palm Beach Central with the lead. They have never been in this position. They are 0-5 against Royal Palm. But you looked at these two rosters at the beginning of the year. Royal Palm sort of in a rebuilding mode. A lot of young talent. Palm Beach Central definitely with some Division I talent uh, on the defensive side of the football. Who would you say on paper had the better team coming in? I'd probably go with Palm Beach Central. Even though their secondary is a bit inexperienced, the front seven on defense and the offensive line is just so big. And You had a few playmakers at the wide receiver receiver position. I just think as a, as a total team, as a roster, Palm Beach Central a little bit more loaded than Royal Palm Beach. Well, no kneel down mode for Royal Palm Beach. Abrams scoots up the middle. The hole shut down quickly as he got flung down at the 28-yard line after about a two-yard gain tackle by Milton Pizarro, and that should be it for the first half. Clock down to five, four, three, two, one. And that will be the end of an action-packed first half. Palm Beach Central 0-5 in its history against rivals Royal Palm Beach. But guess what? Visiting Broncos up 10-3 at halftime. When we return, it will be Jordan Sherwood with our Football Night in South Florida halftime report. You're listening to Football Night in South Florida. Your halftime score once again, 10-3 Palm Beach Central over Royal Palm on ESPN 760 and ESPN760.com. 